All right, we are live. Good morning to everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be. This is Nailing FX coming to you live from Binhua City, Dong Nai Province in Vietnam. I'm uh, streaming to you from the Pegasus Plaza. And uh, this is uh, Nailing FX. Every Wednesday, 10 a.m. here, my local time in Vietnam, uh, just after 3 a.m. in London now. And it's Tuesday night um, at 10 p.m. on the U.S. East Coast. Spot Forex Trading Simplified. Let's get right down to it. Here is the complete uh, December trading schedule. And as you can see here, December is leaving Santa has left the building and um, we are now heading into the new year and here is the january trading schedule um so next uh the next scheduled uh, session is on the 6th of january uh, remember that this schedule is based on new york city time u.s east coast uh, and when we uh, uh, stream on YouTube, please remember to like and follow on YouTube. So uh, for the East Coast folks, it's going to be Tuesday evening, Tuesday night at 10. Um, and uh, for me, it's Wednesday morning. All right, so let's continue here. Uh, once you've registered for your free membership at www.tradewithufos.com slash OPA, you can then just click on the um, meet get meet together or get together um, icon on that page or you can uh, go through and, and add the sessions to your calendar so you don't miss anything all right so here we go and in today's session of nailing fx uh, we're going to do a review a review of our last session uh, so there were some questions about the profiles and templates and indicators and that Christmas gift um, is still available for those of you who have not yet uh, asked about it. And uh, since this is our last session this year and tomorrow is Chris, uh, New Year's Eve, I want to say Happy New Year to everyone and hope that uh, everyone will have a prosperous and uh, profitable new year. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so we're gonna look at the MT4 profiles. I've got some standard profiles set up so we can look at those real quick. And uh, remember, we, we are not going to put on a trade today. We are looking at trades during this part of the year, this season, between just before Christmas and just after New Year. Um, there are possibilities for trading, but the big boys are not trading and we need that liquidity. Um, otherwise, we're just trading between ourselves and, and, it's, and it's not really a, a good trading time. So keep that in mind uh, as we look at the profiles. Uh, the templates, I've, I'm gonna send you a bunch of templates but uh, really the only template that um, is uh, interesting to me right now is the uh, logic day trading template. Um, and you'll take a look at that. You'll, you'll see how that, that's set up. Uh, and then all the template, all the combined indicators. These are the indicators that I use. Uh, I will be sending this in the Christmas gift package. Um, you, sh you can use all of these. Um, I will not be sending the logic day trading because it's not one of mine. It's a commercial um, indicator and you may or may not want to go ahead and get that. It, they, they sell it for a very inexpensive price every once in a while. You can get it for less than $10 um, and it's good all the time. <clears throat> So um, let's go ahead and see what we got here. This is, again, the background of the uh, profiles. Up the top here, different profiles. Down the bottom, the individual 
um, indicators, uh, the uh, templates, and uh, so let's uh, we're, we'll look at the at the uh, profiles and go and do some hunting. And remember that uh, you can always always get uh, your calendar set up by going to www.tradewithufos.com slash HOPA. Uh, once you sign up, if you prefer, you can do Google searches for nailing FX OPA BERT, uh, and you'll get all of the links for the videos. All right, so let's go ahead and close this up. And let me now, uh, I thought I had it, nope. So let me go ahead and start up the uh, MetaTrader. I trade exclusively on MetaTrader 4. Okay. And what we're going to be looking at here is, okay, what we're looking at here exclusively is the MetaTrader, Okay, let's see. I guess my my image here has to move over quite a bit here. All right, so here you can see here you can see the six major currencies all on one profile, all on one uh, screen. And I like to look at this real quick and see what's happening. And remember I told you that uh, I do kind of Forex math, um, and I do that with all my uh, currency pairs. And you can see here USD um, is, my cursor is not cooperating with me. I don't know why. All right, I'll have to use this. Here you can see, if you can see that, it's the first chart on the top left is USD Swiss. The next one is USD Yen, then USD CAD, then USD Singapore dollar. And the reason I have those four at the top of the chart is because the base currency is USD, right? So the base currency is USD. So remember, charts always reflect the movement, the price action of the base currency. So this is showing all the way across the top that the US dollar is weak, is going down, okay? Losing strength. So now let's look at the bottom four and you can see that the Euro USD in the bottom left, then the next one is the pound USD, followed by the Aussie USD, and then the Kiwi USD. And you'll notice that USD is in the counter position. And the second, it's not the base currency. So that means that the base currencies are being reflected by the charts. And you can see down below, all of the base currencies in the lower uh, section of the uh, uh, screen are going up, which indicates that the dollar is weak. So we have, out of eight possible uh, significant currencies, the U.S. dollar is weak. Okay, And so um, later on, I can also show you the dollar index, and the dollar index is also going to indicate that the currency is weak. All right, so that's, that's the U.S. Uh, pairs. Those are the U. The major U.S. pairs. And these are the ones that we probably uh, want to focus on when we trade. However, there are lots and lots of other uh, currencies that we can trade. Uh, obviously, so here I'm going to bring up the Aussie. If I can, there we go. <clears throat> There it is. Now you'll notice that there's six Aussie cross pairs here. Why six? Because the U.S. has been taken out 
as part of the majors. And so I'm looking at the Aussies and, and the top left, I can see that it's Euro Aussie. And so the Euro is weaking, weak against the Aussie in that case. So the Aussie is strong. Then I can see down below that is the pound Aussie. And that is also showing me that the, the Aussie is uh, weak. And then I go to the next four, uh, Aussie CAD, Aussie Yen, Aussie Swiss, and Aussie Kiwi. And what I see is that the Aussie is strong because, again, on the chart, it's reflecting the base currency, which is Aussie. And uh, so what I see here is I see a plus six, okay? Plus six, that means all six cross cross currencies here are showing strength. Um, and so with the US, I had a minus seven or minus eight, including the Singapore. So that is the, the you know, just, just looking at it, I had eight pairs, all of them were, sh were showing weakness. So each one of those pairs, I, I apply a minus one, two. Here I have the Aussie all showing strength. So I apply a plus one to each one of those. And so I have a um, minus, U minus eight for US and a plus six for the Aussie. Well, that tells me that I should be considering trading the Aussie US because I want to match the strongest against the weakest. What happens when you match the strongest against the weakest? Well, usually what happens is that the strongest will be the most uh, successful. So that's how I can quickly determine what I want to trade. I can look at the, uh, the strongest pair, which one is, and again, I'm doing this on the daily time frame. So I'm looking at the longer term time frame. My longer term time frame is daily. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to be interested in going long on the Aussie US just by the fact that the Aussie is showing strength against all of the major currencies and the US is showing weakness against all of the major currencies. So that helps me determine right off the bat what I should be looking at in terms of making a trade. If I were going to make a trade, I would want to go ahead and uh, uh, focus on the Aussie US because now I am uh, placing the strongest against the weakest. I hope that makes sense to everybody um, and you understand why I am doing that. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look now, I did the what I call FX math on the Aussie here. Let's go to the next one, Aussie, and the next one is CAD. And so I should come up with six of the CAD, right? Six CAD. Here we are. And again, the first uh, two positions here. Uh, the top on the top left um, is CAD yen. And then just below that is CAD Swiss. Okay. And that's daily. And then the other four have the CAD in the uh, counter position. So as far as I'm concerned, looking at the four here, it appears that um, the channel that I'm, I'm really, a, the longer term trend identified by the channel is slightly up to flat, okay? It has some strength, but flat. And where the CAD is in the base position, uh, I'm also, I'm seeing up on the yen, but I'm seeing flat on the Swiss. 
So I give uh, no credit uh, to the to the to the Swiss where I'm flat, and I have a plus five here, a plus five. So I could again trade uh, reasonably confident that the um, U.S. CAD or CAD U.S. is going to be uh, something that might give me a, a, a good possibility, okay, on a trade. So I've got, remember, minus eight on the U.S., and I've got a plus five on the CAD. So we can go through and take a look at the next one here, CAD. And then we look at the Swiss. Not too many people uh, like to trade the Swiss because for whatever reason, the Swiss doesn't always fit in it. It kind of moves where it wants to. So let's take a look at the Swiss. And what you see here is that only the chart on the top left, the Swiss yen. Now, Swiss, both Swiss and yen are safe haven currencies, right? They are currencies that, um, well, you know, people will buy those currencies and hold them because they very rarely lose a lot of value. Okay, they're very stable, the Swiss and the yen. They, uh, other currencies came, tend to fluctuate a little bit more. So these are the stable currencies. And again, what we see here, where the Swiss is in the base position, the trend, the long-term trend, when I'm looking at the, the, the channel, and I, and I identify the long-term trend in the channel by looking at the center on, on these small charts if I had a if I blow this up to you know a big full screen chart I could see the whole channel up top to bottom but I'm able to take a quick look at the the middle band of the channel and I see that it is rising slightly rising slightly so uh, let's take a look now every other chart on the Swiss the Swiss is in the counter position. It's not in the base position. So I have to recognize that it's going to be, um, if, if the chart is rising, it means the Swiss is falling. Okay? So let's take a look. Uh, in the Swiss yen, we have a slight upturn here. So I'm going to give that a plus one. Uh, the next one across the top Aussie Swiss is also rising so that's now plus two um, we have the pound Swiss and that is slightly rising okay down below that is the Kiwi Swiss slightly rising um, or actually rising a little bit stronger the CAD Swiss is flat is flat Okay, although it looks like it's coming down, remember I'm looking at the longer term trend in the middle of the channel, and so this is this is this is coming down more than more than going up, and um, the Euro Swiss is slightly rising. Now again, because everything is just slightly, it's it's the only one that's really got a good slope to it if you if you look at the angle um, is the kiwi swiss and so i would avoid trading the swiss right anything that's swiss right now uh, would be risky you you could trade it but it would be risky and again this is this is simple very simple approach to how you determine what you might want to trade. So the next uh, currency pair that we're going to look at is the euro. So let's take a look and see what the euro is doing. All right, here we go. So first one that top left of the chart here, 
is Euro pound, the Euro pound. And I can see that that is definitely flat by the center band, possibly a slight rise to it, but definitely flat. The Euro yen, the Euro yen is showing some strength against the yen, okay, long term. Uh, the Euro Aussie, the Euro Aussie is showing some weakness. Wow, is that a big surprise? No, we already knew that the Aussie was the strongest currency of all the majors. So obviously the Euro has to be going down against the Aussie. So if you're going to trade anything Aussie, you want to trade in the direction that, the, that shows Aussie is strong. And since the euro is in the base position, you would do what? Buy this? No, you would be looking for an opportunity to sell, okay, to go short. Okay, so now let's go ahead down below the uh, euro Aussie and look at the euro Kiwi. And uh, it's a simple fact that the Aussie and the Kiwi, they pretty much parallel each other most of the time. So it's no surprise to see that the Euro is weak against the Kiwi, all right? And then we look at key, Euro CAD, slight up. And then finally, the Euro Swiss, the Euro Swiss showing slight, um, slight strength against the Swiss. So in, in all these cases here, we have a mix. And the only thing that we can look at here and really say that uh, gives us any confidence to, to look for a possible trade would be the Euro Aussie. So I hope you're following and understand uh, how I'm doing this and why I look at my charts this way. Now, if you've got a nice big screen, if you've got a small 14 inch uh, laptop that you're trying to trade on, you should, if you're serious about trading, consider getting at least an extension screen, a larger extension screen. A 19 inch uh, would be the, the minimum. Uh, 23s are fairly inexpensive now. So, uh, you can put your charts out, slide them out onto a bigger screen. Um, you, you, you need to just be able to see uh, what's going on on the charts. That's the, the, the most important thing. All right, so let's quickly take a look at the pound now, the, the six pounds. And uh, what would you expect to see on the pound charts here? Okay. now. I'm going to take a look at this and start again up at the top left of the chart. That's the Euro pound and it looks flat. It looks flat. It could go up, it could go down. Um, nothing is really telling me right off the top, right out, you know, immediately that there's a possibility. Okay. So the next one, is the next all the all the other charts so the euro pound is the only one where the pound is not in the base position so everything else is pound related so i'm looking at pound cad and it's slightly up but pretty much flat uh then i look at the pound aussie and well what do i expect i expect that the pound Aussie is going to show weakness, that the pound is going to be dropping. And it is, it's not a strong drop. It is a weak drop there, but still it is dropping. Okay. And so again, this just goes to verify that what we saw in the Aussie, uh, when we did the math on the Aussie, um, we came up with the Aussie being the strongest currency, strongest major currency that, that we could be looking at. And so let quickly down below that, the pound Kiwi is showing weakness. 
pound is weak there. The pound is showing some slight strength, some, some strength holding up against the Swiss franc. And the pound is showing strength against the um, uh, yen. So um, you can go in and then try to make some, some trades there. Let's go quickly to the next next pair, the next six pairs. We're going to be looking at the yen pairs. Now, yen is always in the counter position. So anytime you're going to trade a currency, um, know that yen is always, always going to be in the counter position. So everything here on, on, on these six pairs is reflective of the base position. Let's take a look. So the yen, starting at the top left of, of my profile here, the yen is weak because the euro is showing strength. The pound yen, the pound is stronger than the yen. And then we have the Aussie Aussie yen, obviously, Aussie is showing strength. Now we have below that the Kiwi, okay, Kiwi showing strength against the yen. Uh, we have uh, strength against the yen in the Swiss, and we have strength against the yen in the uh, CAD. So we have a minus six, minus six six for the yen okay so we have a plus eight right or plus seven if you will uh, depending on the only reason I, I I include the Singapore dollar because it's becoming a uh, safe haven type of currency in the uh, uh, Asian market okay so uh, I use that, and again, it balances out the screen. It balances out my screen. I could take the uh, yen uh, or the uh, Singapore dollar out and substitute the dollar index chart if I wanted to, but uh, then I, you know, it, the index chart is just confirming the math that I'm doing uh, by looking at the actual charts. So. Here's a, an interesting twist. Um, now it appears that the dollar being the weakest against the yen being weak, right? Everything shows the yen is weak. So I've got a minus, minus eight for the US dollar and I've got a minus six for the um, yen. So basically, huh, I want to, do you want to bet, so to speak? Do you want to trade? Do you want to put your money against two weak currencies? I don't. <laughs> so uh, again, this is just simple, very simple approach. And remember, this is Forex Trading Simplified. I'm not going to go into a lot of, uh, you know, algorithm calculations and come up with some magic numbers and all those types of things. I look at a chart. The charts cannot lie. The charts cannot lie. What's happening on the chart? No one, no one can go back and say they don't like the way a particular chart looks and make changes, which can be done in uh, most other areas. Okay, Different reports can be changed and the wording can be put in. And the charts will reflect what's happening. Okay, So the charts cannot lie. I rely on the charts. Okay, All right, so that's the yen. We have one more since there are seven uh, majors, and that is the Kiwi. So we'll just take a quick look at the Kiwi here. 
and see what's going on with the Kiwi. All right, so now we see here that the Kiwi, I didn't, I didn't set these up properly. Let me take a look. Uh, yes, I did. Okay, so across the top of this uh, profile uh, page, we are looking at the Kiwi being in the counter position. So that means the chart reflects the base position. And starting at the top left, I see that the Euro Kiwi, Euro is weak against the Kiwi because the chart is reflecting a downward uh, trend. Okay. Uh, now, <clears throat> I just mentioned this in passing because we're not going to focus a lot on it. But if you're looking at the MACD, when something is weak, the MACD will usually be below the zero line of the MACD. Okay. Now it may be rising, showing that there might be some strength coming in, but overall it's confirming that if the trend, the overall trend is down and you have the MACD below zero, uh, it's a safe bet that any movement to the upside uh, is likely only to be a pullback, a little retracement. Now, pullbacks and retracements turn into reversals, so you have to have a good trading plan in order to understand uh, how to protect your account. And that's the big key when you are trading. If you are not focused on protecting your account, yes, there's risk. You, you must take risk. If you don't take risk, get out of trading. That's all there is. Sorry, there is always risk. But you can reduce your risk by understanding how to look at and analyze the charts that are available to you. And that's my whole focus is to make trading simplified, forex trading simplified, so that you can learn how to analyze and look at charts. All right, so our top row shows that the uh, Kiwi is strong because the top row shows that the trend, except for the Aussie Kiwi is showing flat. No surprise there. And then down at the bottom, the charts are all the Kiwi Swiss, the Kiwi CAD, the Kiwi Yen. They are all indicating that the Kiwi has strength. Okay. And again, look at the bottom row of the screen, those three charts on the bottom. And what you see, take a look. At the bottom of those charts, you can see that the MACD is all above zero. Okay, The MACD is the histogram, the red line that kind of oscillates around that is the signal line. And the yellow circles, if you can see those yellow circles, they indicate when the uh, MACD, being the histogram, crosses the signal line. And usually when that crosses, there might be a, an opportunity for trading. That's where you focus. That's where you focus. Uh, so on a daily basis, when I look at these charts, I also take a look to see, well, do we have any? Yes, we do. New Zealand Swiss, New Zealand Swiss just had, well, actually yesterday, because today is still building, right? Uh, oh, and I want to want to make a comment. I read some comments about people saying that um, some indicators that repaint are developed by unscrupulous traders who only are trying to steal your money. Well, 
That may be true. That may be true. They're trying to give you a false impression. But think about this. Some of the most effective standard indicators, for instance, linear regression. Linear regression constantly repaints because of the look back period. And think about this. When you are watching a candle develop during a period, isn't that candle repainting? Yes, it is. And then it stabilizes and, and locks in an open, high, low, and close. Now, that open, high, low, close information is then maintained in the database so that it cannot change. Well, if you tried to maintain a database for every kind of indicator, you could never use them because they would overload your computer unless you, you know, had a data center that could do it, okay? So as retail traders, small guys, you and I, we don't have that capability. And so, you know, the big guys, what I call the elephants in the trading business, um, they've got a lot more resources than we have. So we have to use what we have, learn to analyze properly, and move forward. Take risk, but remember, don't risk foolishly. All right, so that wraps up the seven majors. And now what I'd like to do is show you two different two different uh, profiles that I created okay the first one here my number eight profile is the indices okay now to say well Forex trading what 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 is what why should I look at the indices well Indices will help you understand what's going on in the marketplace, okay? So looking at these indices, plus the fact that maybe you don't trade Forex exclusively. Maybe you are a futures trader and you like to trade some futures. Um, you might trade futures on a different platform with a different broker. So you can use your MT4 knowledge. You can use the MT4 charting tools that, that I've been showing you to actually make better decisions and analyze what's going on in the indices. So you can see here that the Dow, the US 30, is rising, okay, is rising. There's still strength showing in the Dow. And as far as the NASDAQ is concerned, that is also rising. And the S&P 500 is also rising. Now, the, the chart that is in the bottom right of this profile page is the U.S. dollar index. And you can see that the U.S. dollar index is showing weakness, weakness. And we knew that. We knew that we didn't need the U.S. dollar index to tell us that the dollar was weak because we already did the FX math, right? FX math. Uh, and we knew that the, the dollar came out with a, a negative eight, which is the lowest score that it could get. So obviously the index has to show weakness. All right. So... You can use this to help you with futures. You can use this to help you with options. Maybe you like to take some options trading um, against some U.S. indices, and you want to see what's the long term. Um, so if I can, can get into an option and hold the position uh, longer, or if I want to sell an option, if I, my account allows me to sell an option, um, I can get in and see uh, when I sell an option, I want to sell short term, uh, which way the, the trend is likely to move. Okay? So, uh, and if you're interested in learning futures and Forex, uh, make sure that you, when you've signed up, 
um, at tradewithufos.com. You look at the schedule, we have superior, superior, stellar options traders and futures traders who will show you techniques and analysis opportunities that you won't find anywhere else. So just as I tried to make Forex trading simplified, they are going to give you those options and uh, futures trading in a very crisp and clear approach. So don't miss out on that. We provide you with all the asset information that you could ever need. So finally, let's take a look at one more uh, profile. And that's my number nine. And that is gold and silver, gold and silver. Excuse me, gold and silver and oil. So the top left is XAUUSD. So that's the uh, gold chart. And it looks like gold is kind of uh, flat slightly down actually slightly down um, the indicators if we were to read all the indicators it would be uh, flat um, and again look at the look look at the MACD here you can't see a lot of the MACD but when the MACD is showing very very close to or touching the zero line um, that's an area when it's at zero, it's either going to move in a direction and you wait for that impulse move to happen, or you just stand by because indecision is going to be the key um, at that point. So if the big boys, which we're looking at, what are they doing really on the chart? If the big boys aren't really interested in pushing price on uh, a currency or on gold or silver or oil or or the, the futures, um, then the MACD is going to be hugging that zero line. And so we just want to see what they do. And, and when we get out to extremes and the MACD crosses, the uh, signal line, um, we have a better indication of, of direction. So gold flat for right now. Um, I could bracket a zone if I wanted to and say, okay, if it breaks out of here or down here. Um, but I have better indicators to help me with those. Okay? As far as silver is concerned, the, the chart below the gold, um, it is showing some strength to the upside and that's pretty common whatever the gold is doing silver is usually uh, parallel to some extent and we'll be watching that all right so now let's take a look at the west texas crude west texas crude is showing some strength to the upside although it's kind of at, at a high point uh, when West Texas crude gets up into the 50-60 range, uh, it becomes too expensive and the price will be pushed down. Right now it's looking at hugging onto close to 50, um, still shows the possibility for it to be moving to the upside. As well as the Brent, Brent crude, uh, same, same thing, Brent crude has already gone over 50. Um, and you can see, I'll just bring this chart up if I can. All right, so here we can see that Brent has rising, rising here. And I'm going to go ahead and add, well, first let me check to see if I have it, okay, the indicators that are on here are the spread, the channel, the alerts, and my profile SET. So I am going to add that commercial 
indicator, the LDT. All right, so notice, notice here now, you know, I'm, I'm not on a currency, but the rules pretty much stay the same. When I add this indicator in, okay, when I add this indicator, what you'll see is, an, is a movement from pink squares to light blue squares, pink to blue, pink to blue, pink to blue. Okay. Why am I? You're sharing the screen. Yes, I am. I don't know why that is up. Okay, there we go. All right. So you can see that when price went to the extreme of the currency, um, or excuse me, of the of, of the uh, channel, and then came back out of the channel. Everything lined up over here. It uh, it turned blue, and at that point, we had multiple multiple indications that price is likely to rise. And I look down here, my MACD, and I see that I got that yellow circle where price has crossed the signal line and from there uh, it took off and now it's at the high of the channel and I'm starting to get signals at the high of the channel but I haven't got any real real strong confirmation that it's going to come down all right but it, it is going into that 50 60 dollar range which um, nobody wants price to be that high. Yeah, yeah, they have to make some profit, but um, inventories start to uh, be be used rather than buying uh, fuel oil and oil. So it's tough for price to get up there, and it will oscillate down. When price gets down into the $20 range of oil, and it gets down to the $20 range of oil, then it's kind of really cheap, very inexpensive for oil. So it will obviously start to make a, a march to the other side. And if you look to the, to the, to the left of this chart down here, again, Price came down to below $19. It was around $16 for a, a day for a, a, just a couple of ticks here. Um, and that, just by keeping in mind uh, 20 to 60 um, and holding, you can see price moved up. And at that point, again, you've got a lot of indications down below here that price was going to come back around um, lots and lots of good good opportunities to take a trade um, and then you had some some pink squares that turned out to be just pullbacks followed by uh, blue squares that are continuation moves uh, the SETs were telling you uh, that price is going to continue to rise, giving you opportunity to add to your positions if you're a scaler. Um, and so there are lots and lots of opportunities to, to see and trade. All right, so we are getting to the end of um, the charts here. Whoops, what happened now? Oh, it moved all the way over. Okay. Where is my cursor? On the other side here. All right. So, finally, the, the thing that I, I, I want you to basically understand 
is that although I showed you only MT4, only MT4 in, in this analysis and review to getting ready for the new year, okay, um, we also use trading view to help us as an additional source of charting information. Okay. So here's trading view. Here's the British pound yen. Okay. This is a, uh, um, a chart that uh, I put on and or, or this is a trade that we put on uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, and I was anticipating a pullback and then a move to the upside and it did exactly what I anticipated but stopped me out <laughs> and that happens what are you gonna do it's trading I was willing to take the risk uh, looking for the pullback unfortunately um, it pulled back much further on during the day, um, a spike down, took me out, all right? So we look at all of these things here. This is the current Euro USD situation. And what I'm seeing here, let me uh, move this over, all right, whoops. Come on. We don't want that. All right. What I'm seeing up here is I'm seeing that I'm running into an over oversold, uh, overbought, excuse me, overbought area because I have a lot of unfilled orders sitting up at this level. Okay. Unfilled orders. Now the last four actual trades that, that I put on, unfortunately, did not work. They were all losers. I had four losers in a row. <clears throat> Does that mean my confidence is, is, is shaken in, in the technique and the method that I use to trade? No. It just means that, again, I know why, I know why they didn't work. I absolutely know why, because I analyze those trades after I make a loss. Okay? I know exactly why they didn't work. Um, I had a, a, a different focus to, to take a look and see what, what might, might work, uh, put on those trades live, and it didn't work. So I am not afraid to test new concepts. There are some people who think that once they have something, they know it all. I'm always open to learning new things. Okay. So here I'm looking at this and I can see that I'm going to be running into an unfilled order area uh, just above where I'm currently trading or where the, where the euro is currently trading. And I look down at the auto climate and I see that um, the auto climate, a unique indicator, okay, developed by trade with UFOs, um, is telling me that I should expect that price will rise for another three days probably today and another three days. Why? Because here where we get the, the big blue dot down here, okay, uh, the STD, the, the movement here showed 4.67 and round that up to 5. And I'm in day 2 of a projected 5-day rise. So price could very easily and the euro us dollar go up for another three days and i'll be watching not only the uh, euro usd 
on my MT4 charts, but I will also be correlating it with my trading view charts. And so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this session and make sure that you uh, join me again next year. Happy New Year to you and we'll see you next Wednesday in 2021. Great trading everyone. Enjoy your New Year celebrations. That's it for now. So long.